All right, this time I want to take a look at an unknown character. Very few people know this character, and that is Genchen. You might not know about her or how she fundamentally works, so I'm here to give you a rundown about my particular Genchen. All right. She is fundamental to the water team. It's very difficult to replace her. Not that you can't, it's just that it's very difficult. She is pretty much the cornerstone of it. While she doesn't provide a crazy amount of buff or a crazy amount of damage, unless you rank her up, you know, transcending her up, she is well busted. Regardless, all of that permanent armor break on the enemy, the ability to pull all the enemies, well, almost all the enemies, you know, stage wide, so you can, you know, AOE farm them down, right? Um, extraordinary unit. Almost everyone should get a copy. You should already have a copy of her. Whether you have her funk or not, doesn't matter. Just a one copy of her is good to go, right? because she's generally needed in quite a bit of content just because of what you contribute. But yeah, I'm gonna talk about my Genshin in particular, you know, why I build her that way, how I built her and so on and so forth. You know, you get the idea. Anyways, as usual, um, drop a like, dislike and sub if you haven't subbed yet, have the channel out. But with that out of the way, let's go take a look at by Genshin. Don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. All right. So here's my Genshin. One of the thing you might notice that she is only of huh? base S. And that's because I treat her as a support. She is a fantastic damage unit, but her damage mostly scale on transcend levels. She scale up extremely well at around triple yeah. S. This is where her damage really starts to shine and she will start to somewhat keep up with some of the premier Whoa. pure damage dealer in the game. But apart from that, at around S, she is well below a lot of the damage dealer. She really, really scale up with transcend level including transcending level of her counter as she gives final damage boost to the Tyon's unit. And this will scale up quite a bit, right? It will scale up quite a bit and it will be a substantial amount of damage. However, I was kind of low on the currencies when she came out, you know, and so I went for one copy, right? And you know what? That's perfectly fine. There's no problem with that. So here's my general stats. Yeah, right. They are pretty uh, okay, right? They're pretty okay, but okay. They're great. Okay, They're great. They're fantastic stats. We're going to talk about a couple of things is that first thing is in actuality, Genshin actually have six skills and this is very important. She actually has six skills because each one of these skills will essentially transform into a normal version. She is a rage Fuck unit, yeah. and this is very important. Just like energy-based unit, rage units are very, very energy starved, right? So we're you're gonna you're gonna need a lot of energy. But first, let's get straight to the point. So at this current time, Genshin has pretty much one of the hardest hitting oh, in damage. the game. This is just her ult. It's so funny when you really think about it. You look at some of the other characters, ult or combined ults, right? In where their combined ultimate chain doesn't add up to Genshin's ult. So it is important. It is important that you want to boost that. You don't have to, but if you really want to see some good damage, you want a lot of crit rate, and then you want to get this to actually, you know, boost that if you can. So ultimate damage boost is not a bad thing on her. And we're going to actually talk about it a little bit later, but I just got to point that out. Yeah, like I said before, six skills and she's rage. Very important. P is 
definitely great for her, right? It's a fantastic key. It directly boosts her faction, you know. And I mean, even though that is not like she's not good enough outside of her faction, she's fantastic because she boosts armor break. It's crazy. All you see this by all enemies on the field. I mean, anyone a hundred percent of the time will have this armor break, and it just really ramped up. So she benefits every 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 unit in the game. She's absolutely splendid unit. Now, once again, here I am, and well, I would consider myself fairly lucky. Unfortunately, I can't get rid of these and I got my loot back. Remember, loot back is very important because you want to ult as much as possible or ult does a lot of damage. If you watch my stream and I'm fighting and I'm gonna ult, you hear me? Probably hear me say something like, do the thing Genshin. And I say that when, when I'm about to ult with her because I expect a huge chunk of the enemy's HP to pretty much disappear. Especially if I do get a crit now, while I was rolling, I didn't really get a lot to boost that. That is perfectly fine. I wanted as much Berserk as I can in Rage. Unfortunately, uh, we kind of succumb, you know, you would have to give up something, right? Because this is more like Wave of Rage is more important than the majority of these stats, okay? These stats, you want to get them as high as possible, but you want to get as much of Wave of Rage as possible. As I said before, she fundamentally cycles through six skills, one, two, and three, and they're pretty much, they have alternate version, which she's going to be swapping to, and they're going to cause a fair bit, right, of Rage. They are going to cause Rage, and so... The thing is, their cooldown is reasonably low and you need to cycle them because what you're really trying to get to is to do the entire rotation and get to your skill three, to cycle to your skill three, cycle to your skill three. And this costs a lot of rage. Now, she's also an auto attacker. That means you need to auto attack a lot. While you can get the efficiency bonus for rage, it's not as good as wave of rage because you're going to be constantly attacking you want to generate more rage on hit so this is why you need this the problem is if you cannot generate enough rage you cannot use her skill them often enough here's another situation and you can test it for yourself when you actually start a battle let's say you're doing some aoe farming right you start a battle and you throw in a couple of normals. If you cannot cast her skill three fast enough to like do the pull, to pull things in, and you don't have enough rage, you wanna be able to do your normal attacks, generate enough rage, cast skill one to two, and able to cast a skill three to pull things in. And this will improve the cycle and improve her damage drastically. Like. Having enough rage does that. Now, the problem is why can't I have, you know, reduction, cost reduction? Well, because there's no slots. I have, there is no space, right? Most likely, if you do have, for example, or a triple S, this might be a lot, you know, easier. For me, I could wipe out, you know, the skill damage, but she is a skiller, right? She's a skiller and those 1.5% you know, is also gonna scale up, you know, and it's just, you know, we gotta keep them. We gotta keep them because we, we are, in fact, still trying to boost our overall damage. But the point I'm trying to make is, make sure you have wa right, waves of rage as much as you possibly can, which is obviously four. Yeah, it's obviously or at triple S, I would actually just have that. I would be able to get rid of one of these. I would be able to get rid of one of these. And so I can get like ultimate or, or whichever, you know, at triple S. But whatever you do, get those wave of rage. These will fundamentally increase your damage. A lot of times you're not really gonna control her. And so you can't really micromanage her. 
right? The AI just does its thing. So yeah, you want to actually do that. Now, moving on to warps, she is rage. You're going to generally use the, you know, the same basic here, executioner and judge. One of each scales up. She's a very good dodger. She is range. Technically, she's mid range. So you don't have to really worry about HP. These are the standard. Nothing really, you know, caps these out. Everyone pretty much use, use tier threes, right? That's just how it is. Now, obviously, in my run, I go with ultimate damage. Now, ultimate damage is very, very easy. Now, what's happening is I run her sometime with Ning Wan, then she ult with Ning Wan, so you get the ultimate chain damage, and then that goes up. I always run her with armor break because she can keep that up a hundred percent of the time, right? Um, there isn't really much she can really run with. The next thing you can run her with is kinetic mod. So kinetic mod, and you would switch out ultimate equation for kinetic mod. She has zero time. Nah, <laughs> it's just none of these are really that great. You, you know ultimate skill uh workable but i wouldn't really bet on it obviously 12 more levels can be quite effective you're gonna actually decide that based on the scenario you're actually in but majority of the team that she's actually in what happens is they have really really good like enemies fatigue damage like i run her mostly with the and you know Jin Woo. So what's happening is they're very, very good at putting the enemy in modifier mode. And so you're going to get a lot of mileage out of this. Honestly speaking, these warps are very standard. Her warps are very standard. There isn't really much situation. You're going to use them like differently. You're just going to pretty much use them. Everybody know you use the red code because the red code inflict armor on all enemy on the field while casting right RT echo it, it's quite simple it's straightforward i mean you kind of wouldn't really do anything else the sluggish is also very good because it does slow down the enemy it's just you can read it yourself understand what it is there shouldn't be any reason for you to really use anything else but the red now the next thing we got to talk about is actually <laughs> our chips so most of the time you probably will use her like as an ai control unit and her behavior can be a little weird so you generally want her to attack elites because what happened is if you have a very strong team and there is like you know trash mobs and there's an elite sometimes the character what you're using will kill the regular mobs you know kill the trash first and if she attacks like the trash mobs she might not be able to fully complete her normal chain and generate enough rage in in that what happened is in the middle of her combo because her combo is kind of long and you can kill them in the middle of her trying to do her combo and so she won't generate enough rage so you generally want to either send her to kill the elite or kill a boss um she like targeting the same enemy that you would do is not actually a great idea because she'll try to target the trash mobs and so the ai will kind of stumble around because you'll be killing the trash so fast she never be able to do enough normal and cover cover can be great but once again enemies close to the leader if you're killing trash mobs or whatever it is it doesn't really matter the other thing is she also pulls the enemy towards her while it would be great to pull the things about you're killing could be trash so it's best just to tell her to go for elite which means it's the enemies who has the most hp and thus she can actually complete her chain and then pull everything towards that and you the player would actually see that occur and just go over there because obviously you have your own full control of yourself and you can do that while the ai does not now howling c is pretty much what you want right you want to tell her to cast her skill three this is what you want okay this is the pull biggest this is the sluggish 
the rest, I tried these. I can't figure they don't really have the purpose. You want to force her. Tell her like, hey, you're just doing the other skills to generate, you know, the resource so that you can catch this kill three. It's a straight off the bat. Uh, glazing win. Okay. So you want her, like, if you have enough, like I said, wave of rage, you want her to complete the final strike. It also pulls and you will generate enough rage so she can continuously do her combo. Uh, cutting it short, I've never really found this work properly. I think if you have all of the bonuses, so if you have all the rage of rage and all, I remember the other one, the other rage um, buff, what really conserves her resource, um, this is probably workable. But for me, uh, no. <laughs> okay, nah. Nah, it, it doesn't work, right? So I keep blazing wind for me right there. All right, so that's pretty much it. Talking about her, this is why I build her. I think she has perfectly fine stats. The only thing I'm missing is some dupes. I do intend to roll for at least another copy of her to get her to double S, you know, get the free, you know, ranks and get some of that transcend bonus. You know, it's a pretty, pretty good deal right out there right so i do plan to roll another copy but yeah she is great she has very good skins Damn, right so uh, as this time of this video you should be able to get this skin it's gonna look absolutely fantastic once you get the pc climb and yeah anyways with all this talking let's go and put you know some of this off the demonstration yeah let, let's put it to practice shall we all right so we are gonna do our demonstration in spirit capture just to show you some of the ai work you probably see me use her quite a bit and the last one i did for the water team demonstration i did use her and run um, oceanas as ai so i will be running her as ai here I talk quite a bit of that. So, anyways, let's go take a look at our cat. We are obviously looking using ninja because we're gonna mostly be killing trash, and the rest of the bonuses are kind of garbage. So, we're, we're using ninja. Normally, we would be using obviously meteor. You know, more time in modifier mode, and we didn't talk about modifier mode and taking advantage of the damage and so on and so forth. There. Now, since we're killing trash we are obviously going with you know stacking up on the ult and just how much enemies is on the field otherwise from that we would be using you know we're using a, a marginal benefits which is pretty much a staple for almost every team you know if you're gonna fight extensive boss is definitely that and then you would carry sudden offensive right but we're dealing with some trash right now so we're gonna we're gonna work with that that okay so let's go Woo is here to take down so in a situation like this you see that the ai kind of just stands around because there's nothing to do this is what happened right and as i was saying when you're choosing or chips you want to work to avoid that happen now, once the enemies have enough HP and they live long enough, she's going to be able to go in and actually attack, right? And once you start going, she's gone. But obviously, in the beginning, yeah, you're going to get nothing out of that. Going to just do her. Oh, fine. Really big damage. Yeah, everything kind of just dies, right? Now in your water team if you are running her on ji ming ji ming is kind of a stickler and can be quite difficult to use you need to have really good skills precise play on ji ming to get as much the ai is almost perfect with her the only problem the ai with ji ming has is kind of um timing issues so Apart from that, a lot, most of the time I think you play as Genshin, and so, yeah, 
you're gonna have a lot more control of what is actually going on. Well, in case you're gonna use you use the right AI. In my in my Jinwu team here, you know she's uh, full on support. So as you can see, our normal chain is pretty slow. Alright. Uh, 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 okay, I found no! Alright, that's what you get with too much talking. Alright. Okay. It's, it's over. It's done. It's fine. I'm already set for the next challenge! All right, we'll take a look at her damage. All right, in an airy situation, she's gonna scale up. Obviously, she's not gonna outscale Jin Wu, right? Uh, Jin Wu is triple S, so she would actually do quite a bit more damage if she scaled up with uh, had those ranks on her, but it is what it is. Her damage is fine. She's mostly a support for me. And yeah, that's a demonstration of just seeing her work. At least my version work in a more specific AOE situation. Anyways, let's go back. All right, so we are back from all of that. So generally speaking, she is one of the best unit in the game. And I'm not saying that like highest damage, but the best unit in what she brings to your team, whether you want the water, or anywhere right the pull is incredible that permanent armor break is in incredible the damage reduction is incredible like she is a fantastic unit she has some of the best skins in the game i don't know what to say i i, I can only just like you know just sing her praise here i mean almost everyone has seen her by now she is a coveted unit you should at least get a copy if you miss her save and wait grab a copy and she will never go out of style unless they give somebody else the ability to pull mobs in uh you like see entire to the entire field right so she will never become you know like a trash unit she will always be a fundamental unit because she is not ultimately regarded based purely on her damage but for her functionality so unless they power keep her functionality yeah but yeah, for the water team, yes, she is a cornerstone of that, right? For Xi Ming, you pretty much need Gen Chen because, you know, the ultimate chain is best. And obviously, they're both water damage. They are units. There's Leviathan, which I don't have. And I hope I never have because I don't want this unit, which you can put in there. And here's Oceanus for your pure water damage, who are actually going to do damage. And, well, if you don't worry about that, you run Ning Wan. She also ultimate chain with Ning Wan, obviously. If you're running her with Ji Ming and Ning Wan, you want her to ultimate chain with Ji Ming because she can uh, double cast, allow Ji Ming to double cast her skill three, which is where like 90% of Ji Ming damage comes from. So you would want to do that. I will talk about more about Ji Ming as you know, come closer to her actual launch. But yeah, she's a great unit. I definitely recommend there if you're just when dreaming happens she should be on raid out if I remember correctly in CN when dreaming is released Gen Chen will be on raid up because she's necessary for the team all right but regardless of all of that get her skin don't miss it um she should be rerun with Xi Ming so yeah if you can afford it grab both of them right they are fantastic units she's a fantastic unit to have on your team anyways regarding all of that i'm done so drop a like drop a dislike drop a sub have the channel up and with that i will see you guys in another one